Genshin Impact's new area, Enkonomiya, reveals a lost underwater civilization cursed by eternal darkness, ruled by the Shinto deity Watatsumi, and populated by the spirits of long-dead sinners who, get this, speak Greek. But what's even more surprising is that all of this makes perfect sense the more you know about Japan's legendary land below and beyond the sea called Tokoyo. What's up, Japan fans? It's your pal Kay here on Eat, Pray, Anime. If you follow me on Twitter, then you know I just can't stop playing Genshin Impact. One of the nations you can explore is called Inazuma. Inspired by Japanese history and mythology, Inazuma is a chain of islands, each with its own local culture and secrets. One such island is called Watatsumi, and it shares a special connection with the sea, as seen by its distinct ocean-inspired environment and the inhabitants' worship of the Shinto Kami of the Sea, Watatsumi. During your journey through Watatsumi Island, you will be asked by Tsuyoko, a shrine maiden of the Sangonomiya Shrine, to participate in a ritual to restore the island's spiritual connection to their god by retrieving a coral branch from the bottom of the sea. Jumping into a magical whirlpool, you travel to the ancestral home of the Watatsumi people, an underwater realm known as Enkanomiya. Because no sunlight reaches the bottom of the ocean, Enkanomiya exists in a state of perpetual darkness. Part of your trial to acquire the coral branch involves reigniting an ancient machine called the Dainichi Mikoshi, or Great Chariot of the Sun, which acts as an artificial sun and moon, restoring the experience of time to the ancient inhabitants. Once you restore the Dainichi Mikoshi's core, you can switch between day and night, or white night and evernight. During evernight, you can interact with sin shades, spirits trapped in Enkanomiya due to their transgressions or powerful emotions during life. Talking with these spirits, it eventually becomes clear that the ancient civilization that became Watatsumi did not start out as culturally Inazuman or Japanese, but rather as Greek. Everything in Enkonomiya has a Japanese and a Greek name, from people like Supada no Hiko, or Spartacus, to the Dainichi Mikoshi, or Hyperion, or Helios. Enkonomiya itself has many names. The one that is most important for understanding the inspiration behind this underwater city is Tokoyo, the land of eternity, which has a long and equally mysterious history in Japanese mythology. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into Tokoyo's connections with the sea, the ocean kami Watatsumi, death, darkness, sin, salvation, and foreign lands. The first mentions of Tokoyo appear in the myths recorded in the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki in the 8th century. From these stories, we get three different interpretations of what kind of a place Tokoyo is. An underworld of darkness, a paradise of wealth and eternal life, and a distant land across the sea. As for the underworld interpretation, the Kami Susano travels to the land of the dead, known as Yomi or Nenokuni in order to reunite with his deceased mother, Izanami. While Tokoyo is not mentioned by name here, prominent Shinto and folklore scholars such as Yanagita Kunio and Orikuchi Shinobu identified Tokyo as another name for Yomi or Neinokuni. In another myth, Emperor Suinin sent an envoy to Tokoyo to bring back a magic fruit of longevity and eternal youth often identified as the Tachibana Orange. And again, Tokoyo appears as a distant land located across the sea, which the tiny but mighty kami Sukuna Bikona returns to by climbing a millet stalk and catapulting himself across the ocean. In each of these cases, Tokoyo appears as a mysterious otherworld, home to spirits, gods, treasure, and miracles. Tokyo's location has a lot it can teach us about Japanese cosmologies, theories of how the universe began and the shape that it takes. The most well-known cosmology in Japanese mythology is vertical, with the high plane of heaven at the top, the human world in the middle, and the land of the dead below. But Tokoyo, as a land across the sea, offers an alternative cosmology that is horizontal instead of vertical. Japan, Tokoyo, and the Asian continent, called Kara, all sit parallel to each other on the same plane. But just wait, it gets even more complicated. In some interpretations, Tokoyo actually sits at the intersection of vertical and horizontal models. 
Not only is Tokoyo horizontally distant from Japan, it's also located at the bottom of the ocean. This explains how Tokoyo can technically be found across the sea and under the sea at the same time. Not only does Tokoyo have layers of space, but it also has several layers of meaning from different schools of religious thought. Tokoyo's location at the bottom of the ocean connects it to one of the many kami associated with the sea, Watatsumi. Watatsumi was born from the kami Izanagi's purification in a river after leaving the realm of the dead. In the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki, three Watatsumi gods were born, each overseeing the ocean shallows, ocean middle, and ocean depths. The idea of Ryujin, the dragon king, who lives at the bottom of the ocean in the dragon palace, came to Japan from China, and people came to understand Ryujin and Watatsumi to be one and the same. Thus, in the famous story of Urashima Taro, a fisherman who saved a turtle and lived at the palace of the Dragon King where he never grew old, we can alternatively say he visited Watatsumi in the land of Tokoyo. It's worth noting that the in-game Sanganomiya Shrine on Watatsumi Island is inspired by descriptions of the palace of the Dragon King with its coral walls and sloping roofs, and Watatsumi is depicted as a serpent or dragon in Genshin Impact. Both Shinto and Buddhist interpretations of Tokoyo conflictingly describe it as either a land of eternal darkness and sin, or a paradise of purification and renewal. We can see the influence of both of these takes on Tokoyo in Genshin Impact. First, let's look at Tokoyo and its connections to death and darkness. As I mentioned, several influential Shinto scholars in Japan's late medieval and early modern periods equated Tokoyo with Yomi or Nenokuni as a netherworld. Either located underground or under the sea, this version of Tokoyo was a dark and dreary place. In some esoteric Buddhist interpretations, the palace of the Dragon King exists out to sea, but a separate land exists beneath the waves. This is the location of Avicii, the lowest level of hell where people who commit grave offenses are reborn and suffer eternal torment. In terms of early kami worship and Shinto, the sea was thought to be a place where pollution could be ritually exercised, stored, and negated. Dr. Fabio Rambelli from the University of California, Santa Barbara is an expert on the sea and the sacred in Japanese religion. He kindly agreed to explain how one of these rituals, the Nakatomi Oharai, works. In Shinto, there aren't many uh, central ideas, you know, the theology, let's say, but purification is a central component, and that is due to the fact pollution accumulates. Being human implies producing uh, pollution by way of the things that we do, you know, encroaching upon nature, violating certain uh, rules or, uh, or norms, or sometimes we don't even know uh, that we're doing it, sometimes we do it on purpose. The sea becomes the central place where all the pollution is, first of all, disposed of, and the kind of treated and eliminated. So in terms of worldview of Shinto and what we would call cosmology, uh, since ancient Japan, the idea was that the world is organized along like kind of concentric circles and the highest level of uh, purity is in the person of the emperor, which is at the top and at the center of this kind of series of concentric circles. Then there is the imperial palace, then there is the capital city of Kyoto, and gradually, you know, expanding areas in which pollution increases. So from the emperor, which is the most pure, to the distant uh, regions of Japan and foreign lands, which are theoretically at least the most polluted ones. Every six months, basically, there is the need to restore order, eliminate pollution, and again, bring back purity to the original form. The Oharai no Norito is this prayer that is recited by a Shinto priest. In fact, it's not even a prayer. I mean, a prayer in our own culture implies the fact that a human begs a god to do something that the god may or may not decide to do. A Norito is slightly different because uh, there is a, there are a lot of very humble forms. On the other hand, this is a sort of proclamation the officiant is asking the gods to do so because of some capacity that these words in the norito have so the idea is to restore 
purity to the world by sweeping away with the help of gods and goddesses all the pollution that had accumulated on you know on land in, in the human realm that threatens the social order and above all offends the gods the priest calls upon winds uh, from the mountains to sweep away all the pollution down to the valleys where they are collected by a goddess called uh, Seoritsu Hime and this goddess kind of carries them along the rivers all the way to the sea where there is another goddess uh, called Hayakitsu Hime which kind of swallows them literally and then she carries them even further away where another god Kefukinushi blows them either at high sea or uh, at the bottom of the ocean where two other goddesses uh, Haya Sasurahime and the Mochi Sasurahime uh, eliminates them completely so this is the process that is uh, evoked actually invoked by the Ohara no Kotoba thanks dr rambelli as he mentioned, pollution can be caused by accidental or intentional transgressions. There are two words for these transgressions in Japanese. Kegare, pollution that just accumulates as part of life, and sumi, pollution created by people's actions. Sumi is often translated into English as sin, so that's where the name for the sin shades in Tokoyo come from. It's not a very good translation, but I can understand how the writers for Genshin Impact got there. One more fun fact. The pollution that was swept out to sea made it to the bottom of the ocean by being swallowed up by a sea vortex or a whirlpool. And that is exactly how the player enters Enkonomiya in Genshin Impact. Nice touch. So it's pretty safe to say that the spirit inhabitants of Enkonomiya experience the dark version of Tokoyo. But for their descendants, the people of Watatsumi Island, Enkonomiya is a source of divine assistance and renewal. Shrine Maiden Tsuyuko explains that the soil of Watatsumi is eroding and losing its fertility. By bringing back a branch of sacred coral cut from the body of the god Watatsumi himself, the island's connection with the deity's spiritual power is restored and the land is renewed. As the hero tasked with retrieving the coral, the player takes on the role of a mythical visitor called a Maribito. According to 20th century folklorist and Shinto scholar Orikuchi Shinobu, a Maribito is a divine visitor who comes from the land of Tokyo to bestow blessings upon the people of Japan. Orikuchi theorized that Tokyo was the original homeland of the Japanese who settled the archipelago as seafarers in ancient times. So when the divine traveler visits Japan to share gifts and blessings, they also strengthen the Japanese people's link to their ancient homeland, just like the player does in Genshin Impact. In another Buddhist interpretation, Tokoyo is identified with the Bodhisattva of Mercy Kanon and her paradise of Furaraku, located across the sea. In one legend, Kanon visits the daughter of the Dragon King to teach the inhabitants about salvation. In gratitude, the dragon's daughter offers her a precious pearl, which may account for the presence of Sango pearls found across Enkonomiya and Watatsumi Island. At this point, we've seen how Tokoyo has been described as a land across or under the sea. We've also seen how Tokoyo has been related to sin and salvation at the same time. This explains so much about Enkonomiya. But what does Greece have to do with Japan's other world? Some commentators on the early myths about Tokoyo theorized that the myth of the wealthy land across the sea actually referred to foreign lands like Korea that the Japanese traded with. Since Genshin Impact is slowly building a mythology around a lost civilization called Kanria, which has connections to Gnosticism and ancient Greece, they decided that that foreign land of Tokoyo is originally a Greek-style land like Atlantis. There you have it. Tokoyo is a mysterious and complicated place in Japanese ocean religion, which makes Genshin Impact's Enkanomiya map even more rewarding to explore. We'll just have to keep playing to see what other secrets are in store. In the meantime, check out my next video on the god of the sea, Watatsumi, and don't forget to eat, play, and watch anime.